in this session. Okay. And I'm also going to share my screen with you. Today's lecture, I think, will be shorter than yesterday's because it's not a lot that we have to go through. Just give me okay. one. All right, perfect. So yesterday I gave you an idea on the different models and also on some bits about human resource management and planning. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to mainly focus on the learning outcome number two, which is understanding how human resource planning is done in an organization, essentially. Do you know what human resource planning is? Yeah, actually, uh, as per my thinking and understanding, uh, the human resources planning is about uh, uh, the employees' uh, uh, engagement, uh, employees' development, uh, and uh, no, for, uh, about the cost, budget control, and everything included in this one. Yeah, that is what human resource planning has as well. Along yeah. with seeing that what they currently have. So they they have a look also at their current, you know, they have to identify what they currently have and what their future human resource needs would be. So probably if you're looking at the next two years, they have to see that right now they probably have 50 associates in the next two years they're looking at getting 80 so how can they reach that goal so what all plans they need to take in the next two years so that after two years they are directly at 80 associates or their goal essentially yeah and also they have they serve as the link between human resource management as well as the overall strategic plan of an organization yes so they link both of them together because the human resource plans as well as the organization plans should go hand in hand for basically getting success in an organization. Yeah. So it's essentially what we spoke. Um, This slide explains that. So it looks at the current workforce skills and then it sees how we can push them to do better and get better output and what we will need in the future after we push them yeah For example if there's an associate who's recently joined like a fresh graduate joining the business right now they are you know probably um a little overwhelmed with work they feel like they don't know how to get things done really quicker because they're new to the business but after two years maybe they will have the skills and ability to even go as a you know as a junior manager position because they might be doing really well so we need to yeah all of that as well and then see the hiring plans for the next two years yeah and then again you also uh, keep in mind the external as well as the internal functions of a business while you're planning that um, mm -hmm. and also human resource management uses all of the different functional areas so it's not just the HR department working when I say functional areas it means um the other teams in the in the organization or other departments in the organization maybe it can be the finance team marketing team sales team so all of them need to follow the hr plans to basically make sure that there's success in the organization and they are achieving its goals after you know probably two three years that they have set in yeah perfect so this explains the process of human resource planning before i start explaining this chart i have a little video for you that i'll play and that will help to understand human resource planning as well and then i'll again elaborate just give me one second my life from that let me know if something is not audible Kuram, yeah 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 sure take a look at the process of human resource planning to meet business objectives and gain an advantage over competitors, organizations should carry out human resource planning. To do this, organizations need a clear idea of the strengths and weaknesses of their existing internal labor force. They also must know what they want to be doing in the future. Human resource planning compares the present state of the organization with its goals for the future, then identifies what changes it must make in its human resources to meet those goals. The changes may include downsizing, training existing employees in new skills, or hiring new employees. The process consists of three stages, forecasting, goal setting and strategic planning, and program implementation and evaluation. 
In personnel forecasting, the HR professional tries to determine the supply of and demand for various types of HR. The primary goal is to predict which areas of the organization will experience labor shortages or surpluses. Forecasting supply and demand can use statistical methods or judgment. Statistical methods capture historical trends where judgment allows the organization to consider unpredictable or new labor market conditions. Usually an organization forecasts demand for specific job categories or skill areas. After identifying the relevant job categories or skills, the planner investigates the likely demand for each. Once a company has forecast the demand for labor, it needs an indication of the firm's internal labor supply, as well as the changes expected in the near future as a result of promotions, transfers, and voluntary turnover. The second step in HR planning is to set goals and to plan strategically. Setting specific goals provides a basis for measuring the organization's success in addressing labor shortages and surpluses. For each goal, the organization must choose one or more HR strategies. Organizations are most likely to benefit from hiring and retaining employees who provide knowledge and skills that create value for customers. Downsizing is the planned elimination of large numbers of personnel with the goal of enhancing the organization's competitiveness. Although downsizing has an immediate effect on costs, evidence suggests that it hurts long-term organizational effectiveness, especially among firms that engage in high involvement work practices. Another popular way to reduce a labor surplus is with an early retirement program. Research suggests that these programs encourage lower performing older workers to retire. Sometimes they work so well that too many workers retire. Sorry about that. So this video just quickly explains what human resource planning is and what, what they keep in mind in doing that. Now, obviously, there are a few bits in the video that I'm also going to go through again in this presentation, but that just gives a gist of what happens. Um, so here we're going to talk about, again, the process of human resource planning on how businesses basically make strategic plans. And then that in turn affects the planning, what HR does on their end in terms of, for example, like the video gave an example that we, uh, if you're looking at greater hiring strategies in the future, we also need to keep in mind that the current employees might be promoted. You know, they might be getting upgrades in their job role. And then also there are a few people who might voluntarily want to leave the company and go to another company. Or there might be few people who might actually want to retire after a certain age. So all of this plan is also kept in mind while implementing HR strategies. Yeah. Then you have how you basically put that strategy into place by resourcing the strategy in, in, so basically what they do is they do an entire scenario that they play in. For example, if they're looking at 50 people are working in the age group of 55 to 60 and HR feels that 5% of them are going to retire in this year 2024. So they basically in, they have already planned on replacing those people from higher management to go into senior management and so on and so forth. So obviously, if the higher management is changing, then all of the hierarchy levels change, right? For example, yeah. you have junior management, middle management, and higher management. If one person in the higher management leaves and is replaced by a middle person, the junior might actually be promoted to a middle, and then there would be hiring happening in the middle rank instead. Then they also keep in mind the demand and supply for basically candidates. So nowadays, there's a shortage of uh, people in their higher position whereas there is so much intake of new fresh candidates who are just graduating because there are more younger people in the market compared to the older just give me one second Hiram. I'm stopping for some water okay okay sorry I'm back yeah so um, is everything clear as of now Kuram? yeah yeah clear Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Then they also keep in mind, um, you know, as the work environment, there are things that change in terms of um, few jobs are now getting replaced by machines. That way, the work environment plays a role. Then also, 
in the work environment, we mentioned there are a few new policies that are being put up. Yesterday, we spoke about the paternity policy, the maternity policy. So it keeps changing or the government keeps uh, making changes to the external environment as well. Yeah. That in turn affects human resource planning. Then um, obviously as a company, they have different operations that they run. Maybe they are launching a new product and you know for that they might have a new production system to make that product. So things can change definitely. But HR plans have to essentially be um, looking at resourcing. They also need to look at retention of their current associates so that basically if the current associates are in the company for a longer time, there is less uh, money that's been spent on hiring. Then the resource plan, the HR plan needs to be flexible and has to have productivity as well as a good work environment. Is this chart clear to you as of now? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Now you're looking at a few. So basically, I'll just explain planning first before I start with this slide. So when you're looking at human resource planning, there are usually three questions that they ask. Um, do you do you want to give an example of what those three questions could be? In planning? Yeah, before you make a plan. Yeah, I can uh, just give a little example as per my mind. Uh, internal planning factors uh, uh, of uh, HR uh, mm -hmm. policies. Like, uh, as you explained previously that uh, we need to think about uh, a new system and uh, we need uh, to think about the cost, budget. If uh, we have shut off job work, then we need to remove the people. Yeah. So uh, this type of uh, internal uh, factors we need to see. Yeah, that's quite nice. And when they are planning as well, then they're looking at a few questions that they ask before making their plan. So for example, they ask where are they currently? Then where do they want to go in the future? And how to get to the future? If I put it as an example to you, it will be, they want to reach from point A to point B. Yeah? Yes. Probably point A is, um, you know, them having 100 employees. Turnover rate is at 10%, something like that. In the next two years, they want to reach point B, wherein they want to have 150 employees. Turnover rate should be less than 5%. So that's one of an HR plan. And then yes. how can they get there, basically? How or what changes do they have to make internally to their existing associates, to their existing plan, um, you know, to how they operate as a business or how they function as a business internally? They would have to make those changes as well. So that's why internal planning makes, you know, uh, is important because the company has to make changes to the current way that they are using their associates and also need to make changes in terms of what all new skills they require internally and what skills the associates already have or can improve on that can basically be uh, used in the future. Yes. Perfect. Now, how do they do that planning? They also check first what the organization needs. So they check that what all does the organization already have in terms of the members of staff that they already have and then they look at what new staffing needs they will require. So basically what new skills they require. They might also look at, for example, um, if you, Kuram, you already are taking care of, you know, the police cases and everything. They might assign you some additional cases and, you know, if you can take that workload. So that will be a new additional responsibility that you're taking. And that's why they wouldn't need a specific person to do that. But for example, if you already have a lot on your plate, they might then need new skills or new people to join the company to basically help as well. Yeah. So that's how they see what they already have, how they can basically make use of the existing associates in the existing workforce. And then they see what all they would need in the future. Yes. Perfect. 
Um, so uh, we spoke about what they already have and then the skills requirements. So they need to see if there's a special skill that they need for what for which they need to hire certain associates. Like yesterday, I was talking about if a company wants to transition towards using artificial intelligence more, then they are moving towards, um, you know, hiring associates who are really good with new AI technology. So that's a skill that only certain people have. And that's why they hire those associates specifically who um, have that skill, essentially. Yeah. Perfect. So it's obviously very important that they um, look at what they already have. And then they look at how things are changing in the market. They look at hiring people with those specified skills then. And then they also need to look at, you know, giving them proper uh, compensation for it or giving them rewards if they're doing better, etc. Could you please uh, explain a little more uh, about compensation? Compensation, obviously. So what it means by this is that, for example, if you have, um, I hired you to basically take care of certain cases that are going on with the police, right? Yeah. And you felt that doing three cases a month or in two months is a very, is, you know, a lot. Yeah. But we want you to do maybe five cases a month. All right. Yes. And for the next few months, you do push yourself and, you know, you're trying your best. You are putting in four cases, sometimes even hitting five. So we, after two, three months as an HR person or as your manager, would essentially would should compensate you by probably giving you a little bonus or giving you a reward so that once we do that and you're compensated for basically putting in the extra effort mm -hmm. you feel like you have you've gotten some reward in return and that will push you to do better and maybe at the end of the year we would have to look at increasing your salary by 10 percent or 15 percent because obviously you met mm -hmm. our expectations throughout the year and we want you to continue doing that in the next year as well. Mm -hmm. So that will be my compensation. Yeah, that will be your compensation or reward. Or for example, yesterday I spoke about those. Um, I gave you an example wherein I previously worked. They gave these um, these points to you. Wherein not just um, you knew that you're getting those points. Everyone else in the organization knew as well because it went on the company portal. And then you could use your points towards getting any you know gift voucher um, on the company website or literally any item they had all of the items they had apple watch they had laptops they had every jewelry electronic item so that was one of a way in which i was compensated for my hard work because you know i was given a little bonus in return mm -hmm. so these are few examples in which it can work yeah, I suppose uh, here I am dealing this uh, injury cases. So the accident happened at the site and labor come to me for the compensation of his insurance claim. Yeah. So it's also uh, the same, same thing or there is a change. Can you elaborate more? Uh, uh, my mean is that uh, suppose I am uh, coordinating with the cases like uh, uh, workplace accident compensation yeah. cases yeah so an accident happened on the workplace and the employee came to me uh, to recover the insurance uh, claim compensation for uh -huh. this injury yeah so wh what i do i do process uh, with the authorities and after the insurance and uh, uh, employee provided with the money as per the disability so Got this it. is uh, also a example of a compensation but that is a specific example of an injury compensation, right? Over yeah, here, yeah. looking at compensating them for their hard work and, you know, giving them a little additional push or brownie yeah. point, that's why they're getting compensated. So your example is also correct. That is compensation, but that is essentially yeah. for the injury that they face during their working, um, yeah. you know, working time, essentially. Yeah, actually, if we see both examples. Yeah. So here, uh, if you do extra work, you suffered. Okay, because yeah. you are not relaxed if uh, someone put on your extra work. So yeah, you yeah. suffered. So yeah. where the employee suffered uh, for this injury and he got compensation. Um, You can say that, but what 
is happening in the example that I mentioned is mm. you're not suffering. If you're doing three every month, okay, three cases, maybe yeah. you just joined or you were just, you know, you've been at the job for just one, two years. And now the company mm. wants you to do more. So even though you're doing four cases now a month, you're not mm. getting suffered in terms of, you know, a lot because it's just improving your productivity or you're getting better at doing your job. Yeah. That's why. That's how mm -hmm. they would like to see it. But yeah, maybe even there would be more stress. So yes, there is suffering. There would be more pressure. So yes, of course. You yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's there. So well. it's mean, uh, the, as per your point of view, the compensation only for uh, the extra work uh, and employee should be compensated for this one. So um, uh, this is a, which example I, uh, I explained with you. So it's also the part of compensation. Yeah, but that would be for the injury compensation, essentially. Yeah, so normal compensation, if we use the same example which uh, given by you. Yeah? Yeah, probably. You can say that. There are different ways in which people are compensated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But you can use this little example as well. This is just for basic, just to make you understand. That's why I use that example. But so... <laughs> you can be compensated in different ways. Your salary is a form of compensation. Your benefits that you get, um, you know, sometimes you have health insurance benefits, healthcare benefits. Even uh, form of this is also compensation. Yes. The, it's come yeah. in compensation. Even injury benefits come in compensation. Yeah. yeah. Your bonus that you get, you get some paid leave, you know, if you're sick or something. All yeah, of that yeah, yeah, yeah. under compensation. So, in other words, all benefits of the employees uh, is a part of compensation. Definitely. Some, you know, some companies give you um, stock as well. They tell you, you know, you did a good job. So, you give you 50 shares of the company. Even that yeah. is stock options are also compensation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. No problem. Let me go on. Perfect. So now we're going to talk about the workforce profiles. Um, this is basically, sorry, yeah, this is basically how managers take care of the specific types of associates that they have in the, uh, in the company and how they manage and monitor them. Yeah. So they see that maybe, you know, in a company, they have a mix of age group. They have some people working between 20 to 30 years old. 30 to 40, 40 to 50. So that's how they check, you know, it, this is just me taking age, but they check gender, you know, if they have a good ratio to male to female associates working in their business. So that explains what a workforce profile is. For example, if I am joining a new company and I read their workforce profile before I join and it says that, uh, you know, the male to woman ratio is very, very less. And the hence that male get paid more than females in that business. So then the obviously the workforce profile would would not be very appealing to me as a new person joining the company, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's how they check the profiles of the businesses, basically. It depends on, you know, from which backgrounds, if if the business is diverse or not, you know, they have different cultures, people coming in from different cultures or not. So there are many, yeah. many things that play a role in the workforce profiles. Yeah, yeah. But those profiles also essentially help in HR planning because in the future, we can see how these various, you know, resources and people can come together to work towards the common goal of the business, basically, you know, to achieve the strategic objective of the business. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Now we're going to talk about external planning factors. So external planning factors, we spoke about internal planning factors, what all changes or things they do internally to basically get the best out of their associates so that they can reach the end goals. But we also need to check the external planning factors that we you know, roughly spoke about before. We spoke about how they see that what all labor do they already have in their business currently that can basically upgrade themselves and develop and in the next two years do better and also what all the business needs so for example if the business is a financial um, you know financial accounting business they might need 
more accountants who are specializing in you know as chartered accountancy or they might need more people doing there's a new um a course started which is called acca so uh who have done that they might need more of that so it depends on what the business works in as well but they see the supply of that specific job role in the market then so they're seeing there's a trend that nowadays there are so many chartered accountants uh looking for jobs so they know that they might find someone who is a ca really easily but there are very few people who are good in um you know engineering or it so that's why there's a labor shortage over there so they check that as well and they determine the supply of the labor in the future and does it um align with the goals of their business yeah for example but, do you know about yeah sorry yeah yeah sorry uh, but uh, about this external planning factors uh, we can say that uh, it's a factor external factors like uh, we need to see the uh legal requirement as well uh like about legal requirement about salaries and uh, about the certification about the qualification of the employees which we are going to hire definitely so that's what i was going to mention that for example the are you, do you know about the um the brexit that happened which was a political thing no really so, i don't know so basically the eu the european union comprised of various different nations they had uh, france and they had germany all of the european union basically and they also schengen had, yeah yeah basically every place where you require a schengen visa that came yeah. under the european union but yes, yes. the uk united kingdom they exited from the european union and they said that you don't need a schengen visa for uk you need a separate uk visa now yeah so um that was a political move but because of that exit from the european union there were so many changes in the labor laws that took place because we used to or the united kingdom used to basically follow the european union labor laws but now that they exited from them they basically came up with their own labor laws so now for example in the uk there is a change in the labor law that you need to increase the minimum wage by i think 4% so all of the prices uh, all of the salaries are going up essentially because the minimum wage was i think 10.15 first for an hour and now it's changing to um 10.95 or 11 actually so that's a change to their basic compensation so that's an external or a labor change but it's going to impact the supply of labor as well right does that example help Hello? yeah 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 perfect so also then yeah, coming yeah, sure. to labor costs so labor costs as i just yeah, gave, then... that the labor sorry Hello? No, no, no. Maybe connection problem. Uh, I did okay. not speak anything. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So labor costs. I was talking about. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me, Kuram? Yeah. No, I'm. I am hearing. You. hello hello yes i can hear you uh, you okay. can proceed please perfect let me just share my screen all right so i was talking about labor costs um and just gave the example that how because of a change in the legal requirements the labor costs are going high now so before so you could hire someone for an hour at the minimum wage rate of 10 yeah. pounds 10 pounds 15 pence but now it's going up to 10 uh, uh, 95 or 11 pounds so everything is going up basically then you need to see the skills that your workforce already yeah. have so as i mentioned uh, previously you need to check what all yeah, understood associates already have and the workforce skills that their associates already 
you know that they can do this job correctly already or how you can help to improve in terms of giving them some training or development plan if they need to improve their skills or brush it up so hope that's clear as well to you yeah then how we previously spoke about government policy yeah yeah sure external planning factors uh, we need to see the external uh, things uh, regarding this about our yeah government policy also involved uh, external not your company internal so it's come in uh, external factors yes perfect and they also have labor market competition in terms of sometimes Hello? want the same form of labor then yeah and there might not be enough skilled people for each business to get that like i mentioned there is a shortage yeah, yeah, yeah. of engineers in the market now so what engineers are doing uh, sorry what uh, businesses are doing is that whenever there is any engineering course that's going on yeah. they're hiring um, you know graduates before they even graduate because they know that there's a shortage of this kind of uh, you know skill labor in the market so they want to hire more engineers i'm yeah. just giving an example and then changing nature of work so nowadays um what people used to do is that yeah, yeah, yeah. what job they need to do they have to do it every day there is no uh, you know changes they can make to the job but nowadays people are willing to you know change that they like flexible working hours they like working from home they they want to sometimes even they can take work that's overnight jobs so there's a lot of change in the nature of how we used to work before versus how nowadays because of flexibility doing jobs at home from your ease of the house is also getting so promoted then also there are few external factors which are the employee expectations there are few people wanting to work full time part time permanent yeah temporary roles then they're looking at the impact of automation so as i mentioned this already how technology is changing and that's changing the way we want or hiring people so you know there are few roles that are being made obsolete because technology is getting advanced and um, because of that advancement in technology we don't yeah. really need that much labor that we were requiring previously Sorry about that. Also, the demand for products and services. So yeah. Business may basically keep changing the requirements of the HR or staff based on which product or service is required in, you know, or is in demand from the customers of the business. So, for example, if, you know, there's a milkshake place which is selling boba milkshakes and boba is in, you know, stock now because everyone wanting that. But now it's changing to uh you know drinking healthy more you know smoothies which are good yeah. for health good for digestion you know like you know spinach smoothies you have blueberry smoothies so that would be a change in the demand from customers and that's why they might need people who now don't know how to make boba but instead should know how to make smoothies Now, these are the different stages that are involved in human resource planning. Yeah. Um, we went through a few stages in the video that I shared with you as well. So they talk about the initial stage wherein they, and also I discussed the same as well. So they have an initial stage wherein they talk about, you know, yeah. what actions they need to take. So basically what all they need to do and what all they need to change or make changes to, to basically achieve their goals. Then the second one is scanning what they already have. So looking at your environment and checking what all work is there, you know, the workload, the stress that's on the associates and how to reach your goals. So your goals are essentially your desires and how to reach them. So the third step is looking at the gap. So basically that I mentioned, how to reach from point A to point B, that is determining the gap in, you know, your um, your things or basically on what you need to work on essentially to reach the point B. And then the fourth step and the last, uh, sorry, the fourth step is essentially identifying the 
needs of the job. So essentially for reaching, for example, looking at AI, like the example I gave yesterday and today again, if we want to progress towards artificial intelligence, we might have to first check if our current associates have the skills to learn about artificial intelligence, pick out the associates that do have the skills, then look at how many associates we are looking to have so that they can help us to push towards AI. And at the end, we would be to brush all of them up and also look at recruitment. Then the fifth uh, step essentially is executing the human resource planning or putting into uh, actual, you know, real yeah. life scenarios. Like you think about a strategy or a mission you want to put in place and then how do you implement it? And then after implementation, you also, the final step would be checking or monitoring that everything is happening as per the guidelines that you had set and the outcome is basically what you want and as per the organization's plan as well. So is this clear to you, Kuram? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, clear, no problem. Perfect. So recruitment can be defined as so we know what recruitment is. So as a part of the HR plan, we would have to make sure that our vacancies are filled or, you know, the expectations in terms of you need a specific skill for this uh, for this uh, vacancy. So we need to do that. So recruitment is that. And the HR selection process is also strategically planned because um, as HR professionals, we can basically determine or decide on how to hire or recruit people and, you know, we might have an evaluation technique. We might have a specific way in which hiring happens. So we need to see what all steps we need to do in terms of hiring an associate. And then how to develop a human resource plan for the organization. We have been already talking about this. We saw the video as well, which explained how to basically develop a plan or a human resource plan. So we basically align the strategic plans of the organization with the HR plans and then the company's strategic plans and the HR strategic plan should work together towards basically the common goal or basically the objectives that we have set in the future and then how you do strategic analysis to basically prioritize the issues that you need to work on first and how in the, for example, if you have a plan for the next year, so what all changes you make monthly to basically achieve that plan. And it talks about, you know, getting the needs done, recruiting, selecting people, and then training and developing them, also compensating them fairly. So we spoke about this plan already. So the six parts to the plan is essentially include everything that I yeah, spoke yeah. about, but I'm just going to quickly go through this again. I think this is quite the last bit that we have reached. So we quietly, you know, I told you this lecture is going to be shorter than yesterday. Yeah. So six parts of the HR plan essentially are, <coughs> sorry, firstly, you determine the human resource needs. So we spoke about this. We need to see what all is required to basically grow in the organization or what all um, things we need to, get done to basically make sure that the organization is working towards its common goals. Then we need to re determine a proper recruitment strategy. So essentially seeing what skills or what uh, labor we already have and how much labor we really require in the future. Based on that, we select the appropriate associates with proper interviewing and hiring processes. At the end, we also make sure that they're properly trained. So our existing associates are properly trained. If, you know, we are working towards AI, they are trained towards AI. Yeah. Whereas you also need to make sure that they're compensation for, of compensated for their good efforts in the end. And you appraise their performance. So once they are working or the, once they are performing up to a certain standard, you make sure that at the end of the year, they do, you know, get you know, probably a bonus for their hard work and so that they can continue with your development that way. So hopefully this process is clear to you. Do you have any doubts as of now?
yeah actually due to some uh, signal problem uh, some uh, wording i missed but it's not a problem can you hear me now i can hear you i think it's just you are getting my voice a little later yeah yeah no problem no it's okay before uh, there was some problem in connection anyhow okay. this uh, finish now so uh, i just uh, need to ask you uh, can i start uh, uh, can i start to prepare the report or uh, after finish this i need to write so if you want you can simultaneously start with your report as well what i'll do yeah. is I'll let the student coordinator know that you want to also work on your assignment so he will help you with all of the resources and he'll send that across is that okay yeah 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 it's okay perfect so we just have recruitment process that already spoke about into how we basically get the best candidates and how we attract the best talent into the company and this talks about how recruitment does that so they advertise uh -huh. they have interviews they're screening the CVs and they also sometimes have second yeah. But yeah, we are done with this lecture today. Do you have any questions uh, as of now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I need this uh, uh, word format to prepare this report. And uh, uh, I just want to start. So remaining, uh, you will guide me when you will finish uh, all the learning outcomes. Then this assessment uh, scenario will come. Uh, then I will be more uh, satisfied about this one. All right, perfect. So we have two more learning outcomes to go and then we have the assignment discussion uh, lecture schedule yeah. next week. So that's when you'll also next Monday tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll let the student coordinator know that you want your uh, assignment uh, resources. So he'll send that to you and have a talk with you for that as well. Uh, no, no problem. Thank you very much. Because right. uh, that, that will save my time. And uh, uh, when you will finish everything, after two learning outcome. So um, I hope um, uh, that will be easy for me. Uh, I already started. All right, definitely done. I will let Aman know that he needs to have a talk with you. All right. Thank you, Kuram. Take care. Have a nice day today. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.